Hello, hello, everybody. It's 8.05 p.m. Central Time on the 8th of February, 2023. It's halfway through the week. It's Wednesday here in the United States, Thursday already internationally, and we are recording an update. We're going to put it out over on YouTube when I'm done here live on Twitch. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see a scrolling chat room. That's the Twitch chat room that's now back open for chatting for subscribers. It's been shut down for several months due to unforeseen circumstances. But that being said, let's get a display capture turned on, and we're going to go over and talk about the seismic events that have taken place. And we're going to start, of course, over here in Turkey just because they continue to move. And we're expecting aftershocks, of course, on this, but this is more than aftershocks. This is about 350 miles from off the coast of Cyprus, all the way back, or 500 kilometers, all the way back up here to eastern Turkey, and a diagonal line of earthquakes making an arc or bending shape going down as far south as Lebanon and Palestine, Israel region, Dead Sea, two of the same sized earthquakes, 4.2 and a 4.1, going down to the south. And I'm going to show you the USGS plate boundary map again. I show this in almost all my updates. And the reason we show this is this is the path that the earthquakes are taking. So we're going to zoom in on it, and you'll see. Here's today's earthquakes reported by the USGS, and they have the new 4.1 to 4.2 down in Lebanon. But we're talking about the other 4.1 to 4.2 down at the Dead Sea yesterday. And that extends all the way down here. So we're talking about going all the way down to Israel and Palestine, all the way up to the plate boundary. And today, here are the earthquakes of the last day. From the USGS, we've now completed all the way across to the other plate boundary with the most recent earthquake just striking in the past few minutes, right next to it and just to the north of it. Two 4.4s, 4.5, somewhere in that range. This one's a 4.4. This one's a 4.5. It's a pretty big deal to see this. We've connected all the way across. Back to it and down out from it, down to the south and out to the west. Now, how far is it from the Dead Sea all the way back up to here. Well, here's our key down here in the corner. And, I mean, we could just kind of eyeball it. We're looking at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, about five to 600 miles just from Lebanon. If we go from the Dead Sea down here, we're looking at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, maybe 700 miles and more like 1,200 kilometers moving in the last two days since the big earthquake all along in the same area all with the same size quakes pretty much spreading out in all directions. Mid-range 4 is going south, mid-range 4 is going back up to the west north, or I'm sorry, east northeast, and the west southwest. West southwest towards here. So one more time, we're going to turn off the rings now so you can see this. This is now the earthquakes for the last two days as reported from the USGS, combined with the MSC European Agency for the smaller earthquakes in here, and you can see it. It's a huge spread of a plate boundary breaking and now connecting all the way across to the spot that I proposed. If it did, it would be a big deal, and now it has, so the big deal has now happened. Mid-range fours connecting all the way across, two plate boundaries connecting them. Proof that there now is most likely a physical connection between the two, and we're going to probably have to update the plate boundary map to include a new line that goes across defining all of Saudi Arabia and the other adjacent countries, the whole plate, and from the north. Now, clearly, we have not escaped out over to the west yet with any significance other than 4.0 and 5.0 levels. So we got a 4.9 right at the border of Albania, Greece, Bulgaria, Montenegro, which is what we were looking for. And then a new swarm broke out up here in North Italy. However, you don't see it on this feed. Let me go see if we even still have access to the Italian feed. I don't know if this is going to work. I haven't tried it in years, at least a year. We'll see if it populates. Well, looks like we got it. Okay. So you see this stack of earthquakes that's developed here. It's marked as 3.5. Well, it came in at 4.0, got screenshots of it, shared it over on social media. 
But when we go look up these locations, so we got to pay attention to what's around the earthquake epicenter. Here is the map from the Italians. And our warned spot is right here in the Adriatic. So the earthquake and swarm, four and swarm, struck over here on land. What is there? Is there anything there nearby? The only way to find out is to look it up. That's why I've got you on here. So let's go take a quick gander. That's U.S. Rural American for a quick look. And we just need to back it out, see if there's any volcanic features nearby. That's what I'm looking for mainly, our volcanic features. Down to the south, we have our marked craters and calderas. You see these? These are all marked. We don't have one marked here, but Volsini is just to the south. It is. I don't know why this one isn't, quite frankly, but this one, whatever the name of this place is. Let me turn on my borders and labels, and we'll see if we can get a Lago Trasimeno. Not marked by the Smithsonian, however, all the others are. Anyway, okay, so our earthquake is striking over just to the west by northwest at Siena. And I don't know if there's anything else here worth mentioning. I'm not familiar with the area. Anyway, I just have to go check it out, see if there's anything of significance there other than volcanoes right next to it. This is a huge volcanic complex to the north by northwest. As yet, I don't know of any names that are assigned to these. But this is something that I noticed previously, and for those of my viewers who have been paying attention with me on certain shape things that we see, that this is one of them. But anyway, that's a volcanic complex if I've ever seen one. Just undocumented and unmarked. Anyway, we're right next to it with a new swarm. We have a new foreign swarm in Italy. That's about a magnitude and a half under what we're expecting. Same for down here in the Aegean Sea. 4.9, about a magnitude and a half under what we're looking for. Same for the four over and swarm in Italy, about a magnitude and a half under what we're looking for so far. Now, a new swarm has broken out, and that's just to the north. That's up here at the France-Germany border region. Now, before we go any further, I think we should probably pull the coordinates on this just because it's a new swarm in Italy, and we have it, or I'm sorry, in Europe, north of Italy. So anytime I see swarms in Europe, we have to pay attention to them because we don't normally see them. Don't normally see swarms up here in Germany. So what's here? Well, we're right along the river. What is this? The Rhine? The, the Rhine River. Well, okay, anything else of any significance nearby? I wonder if there's any kind of power generation here. Hold on. <laughs> Some kind of sweetener factory. That's wonderful. What's this? Oh, Central Hydroelectric EDF de Rheinau. Oui? A central hydroelectric DDF de Rhino. Tremblement de terre. How do you say it in German? Erdbeben. Earthquake. Erdbeben. Erdbeben. Achtung. The electric. Okay, sorry. How could I have known that there would be a hydroelectric power generation station here? I got my crystal ball out or my teraphim and telling me what it is. All right, isn't that what it is? So kind of a cult. No, here's the deal, guys. <sighs> Very low frequency is created naturally by Mother Nature deep down in the crust. It's an electric frequency that passes through the crust, traveling across the place, and it flows like a river. No pun intended since we're along a river. But now the electricity that humans make also is on low is a low frequency electricity of course and it's passing from those stations out to the transmission lines and what we tend to see over and over again all around the world next to these hydroelectric dams next to solar generation stations wind farms nuclear power plants coal-fired power plants natural gas power plants next to all these locations we tend to see significant earthquake activity, swarms, and somewhat large earthquakes. Sometimes, as the VLF wave from Mother Nature that's 
either bigger or smaller, is passing through an area. And these electrical stations precipitate or bring that wave to it. It's not that the electrical station's causing the quake. It's bringing the very low frequency that's in the plate to it. So it's attracting it. In my estimation, that's what I think is going on. Okay? So let's recap. That was just wild, right? Like, I mean, come on. How could I have known, right? It's proof that this was all denied by professionals. That electrical stations and so forth could uh, somehow be attracting earthquakes to them or so forth. Well... It is what it is. Now, a line of quakes going across Turkey means that energy is not gone out of Europe yet. It's still trapped in here, and there's new pushes coming in from back behind it. See? Over to the east, we're going to go open another earthquake. We're going to get the USGS plate boundary map open here. There we go. And we'll go back over to the east. You see Iran. Well, our earthquakes coming from the east are also going to be feeding into this. This is like a flowing river that's been backed up. It's dammed up right there. A little trickle out has gone over to Italy. A little trickle out has gone over to Greece. 4.9 and a 4 and some swarms. But that's not even sufficient at all. This is blocked still there. It's locked and broken and still breaking all the way back to the plate boundary. It's feeding in from over here in Iran. And it's coming in this way, going over to the west. But it's being blocked right there. So there's a new push coming in on top of everything else. And the new push is equal to 4.5. How do I know? 4.5s came across over the past two days coming out of Europe. Let's see if the USGS is, or out of Asia going over to Europe. Let's see if USGS is in, yeah, yeah, they at least have one of them. So 4.6 a day and a half ago, 4.5s worth of energy is now feeding in. So if it's a flood, it's like another storm dropping a little bit of rain, not a crazy amount. The, also, we know it's about 4.5 to 4.7 because of what's going into Africa as well. It's kind of inundating the whole area from Asia. 4.6 up in Asia, 4.7 down in Africa, and in the middle of 4.5, a 4.1, and a 4.3. If you add those together, guess what it equals? 4.7. 4.5 plus 4.1 is a 4.6. Adding in another 4.3 is a 4.73. So, 4.73 is worth of energy in the middle, 4.7 is worth of energy to the south, and a 4.6 and a 4.0, add them together, equals 4.7 right on the money. A 4.6 to 4.7 also struck up here in Russia that I talked about yesterday. Now you can see the spread heading across. It's like a diagonal line of 4.6s and 4.7s, but the spread is going from the North Pole all the way down to Africa. That's the last day. That's the new wave going to the West. Okay? Hopefully you can see that, right? Like, even new people should be able to understand what I'm talking about here. From this earthquake all the way up here at the North Pole to this earthquake all the way down here at Africa and then connecting between them, and it's like a wave spreading to the west worth equal 4.6 to 4.7 total all the way across it so like a giant ocean wave going across a whole plate following the edges of the plate whatever way it can easy path of least resistance and that's the red lines hence the earthquakes going across the red lines but it's getting to this spot where it's dammed up in turkey and the problem I'm seeing with this is that the longer we break in Turkey, the more potential there is for another large quake. I want the energy to escape out and go across Europe like normal. Right now, it's all in the 2 and 3 and near 4.0 range. They downgraded this 3.5 to a 4. So, Speaking of that, let's turn off the Italian feed now and go over and look at Alaska. Also look at Hawaii and the West Pacific. So to get into Alaska... First, I have to talk about the deep earthquakes raised high off the globe. These were subject of my discussion last night in my video from yesterday. So really, we could get them out of here. I just want you to see them where they're raised off the globe. We have letter Ds, so you can remember where those deep earthquakes are. You see that? Now, here's today. Here's yesterday. Pink. Here's today. Notice anything? The three same spots are moving with new deep earthquakes. Letter D at Fiji Tonga letter D over at Indonesia, and letter D up at Japan. The Ds don't move. We, everything on this map stays the same. It's been the way for, this way for eight or nine years now with the arrows. This is the way the flow normally goes. Now, do you see this L-shaped bend in earthquakes? See how it's 5.4, 5.0, 5.0, 5.2? We're going to go back a day. I'll be darned. 
5.4, 5.0, 5.0, 5.2, and another 5.5. But difference is literally a hair of a point, 5.4 and 5.5. Yesterday in pink, today in white. So what's going on? It's a spread of the same sized earthquakes two days in a row. Yesterday, pink, today, white. It's bouncing around in here, yesterday, today. You see which way it's bouncing. It's going from there over to the east, and it's going to bounce, bounce back up to the west-northwest. And what did we get yesterday, 5.3 to 5.4? Like a sloshing tank, I would imagine this to go up a notch from where we are now. And I have a warning. Going right in the middle of the whole hot mess, if this is a giant triangle of earthquakes, do you see it? Now that giant triangle of earthquakes is on all perimeters of it, bordered by deep earthquakes down below it. So think of this like three sets of people lifting on a triangular-shaped piece of stone. But this triangular-shaped piece of stone is really all of this. So it's multiple plates. Something's lifting up from below Fiji, Indonesia, and Japan. Japanese, of course, up to the north on an entirely different plate than the Indo-Australian plate down to the south. So what's going on? Deep earthquake here, here, and here means something's getting ready to happen right in the middle of the whole hot mess. And in the middle of the whole hot mess is where my warning is going for a large earthquake to strike. Could go up in the 7.0 range in the next five days, six days at the most. We have a separate warning going in the silent zone down to the south. This is just based solely upon the antipode. The antipode is just a complex word to describe the opposite side of something. So the opposite side of the planet is where our big earthquake is over in Turkey. And the antipode actually is, I want to say right, somewhere right in here. There we go. So right out here, Point Nemo, and we have a warning going from everywhere from North New Zealand up at the Kermadec Islands up to Fiji and out to Point Nemo. It's a huge area. I normally only warn 200 miles. I'm trying to get it down to 200 miles. But because it's out there in the middle of nowhere in the ocean, and it's the antipode. We, I don't normally issue antipode earthquake warnings. It's just something we watch for. It's a scientific fact that's proved already, so we don't even have to forecast for it. It's just expected that there's going to be an antipode quake within a few days after a big quake on the opposite side of the planet. Okay, that's not my take on it. That's the studies. 5,000 different or more earthquakes studied, 6.0 plus, and the professionals found that in a majority of the instances, within a few days after one big earthquake, on the opposite side of the planet, you get another big earthquake. So here's our big earthquake on one side of the planet. Then we, wow, we're chopping out here. Got a lot of earthquakes on the feed right now. We get down to the south, and we look for a big earthquake on the opposite side of the planet. Okay. Now let's talk about Hawaii and Alaska. Because the reason I had to bring up all these quakes over here in the West Pacific, dang, Look at this. Hold on. Why are we chopping out so hard? No way. Hold on. We have 4,032. Hold on. Did I? We have 4,032 earthquakes on the feed for the week. Hold on. Is this right? Hold on. Seven day. Okay. I got the feeds on. Look, guys. They've updated the feeds. We've got 4,032 earthquakes on the feed for the week now. That's the combined feed, but in the past, I've seen this go as high as 5,000. And 5,000 was the most that I've seen in a week. And it shut down Earthquake 3D. It literally couldn't handle the number of earthquakes and pointed plots on the screen at once. Um, it reaches a limit, I suppose. Not my graphics either. Literally, Earthquake 3D reaches a limit when it gets to 5,000. We're at 4,032 for the week, which is a dramatic step up. Now, yes, we have a lot of earthquakes over at Turkey. With a big earthquake, we get a lot of aftershocks, but it's filling up the feed. And I've told you guys this several times in the past. Whenever we start to see stuff like this, when you start seeing, you know, we're getting maxing out the feed with number of earthquakes, that's a big deal. So I just want to again make sure I've got I've got USGS seven day USGS seven day, um, twice. Let me hit refresh again. 
I just can't believe it. I ca Hold on. Sorry, guys. I'm recording live, and I want you to see what we have to go through. So here we are. Thank God. Oh, God. This is live. I'm not cutting this out. I want you to see what I have to do live to verify. Okay. So USGS feed was double populating. We have 2,042 earthquakes for the week. Thank God. I was like, how did we just jump? Literally, I was mind blown. I was like, how did we just jump to 4,000 quakes? The USGS feed was double populating. Face palm. I'm going to sip my coffee while you guys all just sit there and snicker. It's all right. It's all right. Let me follow up that failure with this success. Virginia just got hit with a new earthquake right off the coast of Delaware. Now, for my viewers who are not aware, about two hours ago, I got on and showed everybody Delaware right here. And I showed you the Dover Air Force Base, which is right here. Now, the reason I showed you all the Dover Air Force Base is because something happened on radar that I have to absolutely positively show you now that an earthquake has struck right along the coast. This ties in with what I showed you no more than a few hours ago. We're going over to satellite radar. We're going to go over and select mosaic radar first. We're going to go to a sub-regional sector, and we're going to go over to the east coast. This plays in with earthquakes. So what I'm going to show you is what I showed my viewers two hours ago. Now we have an earthquake here, guys. Just struck in the past 30 minutes. So let's hit play. What I want you to see is something that happens and it shoots down shoots down over the uh, earthquake zone where I issued the warning. So there we go. Let's just bring it forward all the way and show you what the radar started doing earlier that got me to get on and show you what was going on with the radar. This. Now, if you look really close, you're going to be able to see a stripe-like signature in here. The stripe-like signature is actually a rotation. This is three-dimensional. So think of this like a cone and that it's a rotating vortex cone that goes back to the radar station. So when I saw this, and I saw that it was like sighting over the area where I issued the earthquake forecast for yesterday, yesterday, this, again, I issued a warning for this spot where it's pointing to, right down here at the border. Hopefully you can see all this. So when this happened a few hours ago, I got on and told my viewers about it and told you about the earthquake warning for Virginia and brought up what station this was happening from, right? There, the beams are overlapping, one station coming out of North Carolina, the other station coming out of Dover, Delaware. So let's go forward a little bit more and excite again. Right there and there and there. But let's go back and just go over to the actual next rad radar station because that's the mosaic. I want to see what the actual radar station is showing from Dover, Delaware. Here's Dover Air Force Base. Let's go look at the last 200 images. Now, I already did this with my viewers two hours ago, three hours ago. We're going to bring it forward, and we're going to watch this thing go and shoot out. It's, there it is. Okay. So this thing starts shooting out down to the southwest, right there. And we looked at this on hydrometer classification. We looked at it on differential reflectivity correlation coefficient. And what it shows is a, a beam, a very powerful microwave beam, looking out at something down to the southwest. Now what that does is that actually can strip electrons in the atmosphere, scuffing your feet across the carpet, if you will. You know how you scuff your feet across the carpet and it can build up a charge in you. Well, this will build up a charge in the atmosphere and then be deposited along the electromagnetic field. This is like a big dome or a bubble around the radar station. They zap on one side and it can deposit anywhere around the outside edge of the 50 or 100 nautical mile or 200 nautical miles this views out to. So our view here only goes out 100 nautical miles. But why am I taking the time to show this to you? An earthquake just struck right next to the spot that I was showing you. And I talked about how the electrons stripped from the atmosphere can go down to ground and cause earthquakes. Now a quake struck. This just struck at 121 UTC. It is now 229 UTC. It struck one hour and nine minutes ago. One hour and eight minutes ago. Or an hour and 28 minutes ago. Whatever. No, an hour and eight minutes ago. One hour ago this struck. Three hours ago, I showed you this. Yesterday, I issued the warning for an earthquake in Virginia at the border. So I'm not bragging or anything, but what this is, this is a, basically a weather modification that also strips electrons and can cause small earthquakes. 
one hour storm total precipitation. Let's go see if it actually generated any kind of precipitation off that beam. Sure did, right in here. It generated a tenth of an inch of rain, a fifth to it a tenth of an inch of rain, just a small little stripping. Now, the way that works is when you scuff your feet across the carpet of the atmosphere with the powerful radio waves, those free electrons actually strip and build up in a charge in a pocket in the layer in the atmosphere that's already been found that it attracts water molecules and forms cloud condensation nuclei, the precursor to rain. And it becomes reflective. And radar reflects itself when it strips electrons. So the beam is reflecting itself. There's no storm there. It's reflecting itself back to itself, high-power microwave stripping. Anyway, the earthquake that struck next to it cannot be ignored. And I'm glad I'm documenting this live. Here it is on the USGS feed here. Virginia. Now, where did we issue the warning in Virginia? Right here, where they were beaming down to from the radar station that beamed down to the southwest. Okay, so back to it one more time. New earthquake struck on the east coast right next to our warned area. Check it off the list. However, this is less than I'm looking for by about a magnitude. I was looking for about the same size quake that struck up on the northeast. Now, this is all on the edge of the North American craton. Take a look at this craton graphic. Let me get it a little bit bigger here on the screen. And then we'll get over here and take a look at it compared to the North American continent. And you'll see that the earthquakes match going down through Texas back up the East Coast. So we're on the edge of the craton. They just created an electron cascade event by pulsing the radar, looking at something or doing something, projecting the beam over the area where I issued the warning and brought the earthquake over to it where they were beaming to or from or two, because it's going back to it. That electromagnetic energy will stay in that radar dome bubble for several days and resonate. Severe weather could even go there. Wow. So back to it. Deep earthquakes. We're expecting the potential of a large earthquake, 7.0 in the middle of all this. And we're watching down by New Zealand for a potential 7. Based upon the antipode, I'm iffy on that, but I'm still telling you about it. There's the potential for an additional 7 over in Turkey if the energy does not escape out over across Europe. We have warnings going in the Adriatic Sea here for Italy. Another warning going here for Albania. We may check Albania off the list after a few days. If we see North Italy and all this move up here, then it'll look more like Albania is kind of getting a close shave and might get missed. But right now, I'm not going to say that at all. 4.9 struck right on your doorstep. We're looking for near 6.0 level activity to go across Europe in the next few days. Romania stands as well. Romania, we're also looking for up to 5.9. Let's go over here along the west coast of the United States really quick and just take a look. Looks like an arrow pointing to the west coast, but really think of this like a mouth spreading out, right? Like a letter C or a letter V with two directions of quakes going into the edge of the North American Craton once again. Let's turn off, actually, let's leave the rings on and turn off the magnitudes. Turn down the ring size. Two days worth of quakes shows us pointing. Do you see it? Like a big arrow here pointing to the southwest, right down to the Arizona border and over to Texas. Compare this, the line of quakes coming out of Yellowstone, going down through Utah, to this, the craton diagram once again. There we go. So the deformed edge of the craton, the purple part. Now look down at Texas, the rusty brownish car part. So both sections are moving over to the east, all the way up the east coast, and pointing across the deformed edge, pointing us down to the south, down to the spot that's moving in Texas. Now along the west coast, you see we're built up along the creationary belt, right? So that this graphic really matters. I just want you to remember it. Look at the quakes over the last two days. It's defined perfectly. It really is. My biggest discovery, guys, that there's a seismic wave that flows across things and drops off the earthquakes along the way. Professional said it was impossible, although you can see it right here before your eyes. we got the same size quakes again going across the plate. They're all twos and threes at this point. We're expecting this to take the next step up, including a new five down in Southern California, 4.9. Look at this line of quakes going out following where our arrow is. You know why I have an arrow there? Because I observed this first happening over and over again. 
This goes from our nuke test sites, which I will show you in a second, all the way over here next to a volcano and a volcanic field. Uh, the volcano is called Dutchman's Draw, believe it or not. But let's go pull the quakes from in the middle of this at Indian Springs, Nevada, and we'll put it in and see what's on Google Earth. We're going. I'm already telling you, it's a nuke test site. We're going out of the nuke test site, and we're going to spread over to a volcano that sounds it's like my name. But here we are again inside of the nuke test. Well, what do you want to call this? The valley? Doom Valley? Doom Town's down at the south end of it, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was called that. But anyway, right in here, here's all our craters, and we'll just get the nearest test site here. This one is U.S. Nuke Operation Haddock, August 28, 1964. Undisclosed kilotons on Haddock. Interesting. The one next to it, U.S. Nuke Operation Bill B, is not classified, or at least the kilotons, 210 to 249 kilotons. September 13th, 1963. But all of these are craters from underground nuke tests. So why do we keep getting earthquakes here over and over again? They're not doing nukes there now. Those are man-made faults that become excited as energy is coming and feeding the area. This wave that I'm talking about, the seismic wave, it comes down the California-Nevada border, hits the volcanoes first, then spreads and goes this way, right over to the east. And it goes over to the east, like I said, over to next to what I would consider to be Dutchman's Draw. Not what I, uh, next to what I consider to be, because it's, it's a few miles. It's close. There we go. Here's our earthquake epicenter, and Dutchman's Draw is over here. Oh, wait. There it is. Here is Dutchman's Draw. So I'll say it's next to Dutchman's Draw. It's not exactly at Dutchman's Draw. You see the volcanic field that goes to the north to the Markagunt Plateau, which is a giant volcanic field in South Utah that extends. These are old lava flows, believe it or not. Here, here's some of the younger ones. They go back to older buttes that are covered in trees, but younger lava flows broke out on the sides of those buttes. It's pretty cool looking. Anyway. So the lava flows go out, and then the old plateau, you can see it here. This is the old volcanic field. It goes out around the edges where the old volcanoes are. They're weathered, and they kind of like left pillars of old volcanoes that go out to the desert there. Okay, now you get the picture of where the quakes are spreading from the nuke test sites over to the volcanoes. And there's just nothing but volcanoes. I just showed them to you, but there's just nothing but that connect in between if we go look them up. It's, again, yeah, you guys can go fact check me on this if you need to. Go pull the next earthquake. It brings you, like, right in here next to Crater Hill. Go zoom in on Crater Hill. It's so old. I, I would say this will never erupt again, I don't think. But Crater Hill, Butte, for instance, and so forth. Then we go back up to the west-northwest up to here. Next to Santa Clara Cone. Ah, okay, Santa Clara Cone is actually one that's marked. Let's wait for it. Really cool looking. Look at that. And the lava flow right along the highway there. Okay, anyway, back to it. So our line of quakes from the nuke sites over to the volcanoes. What do they have in common? Both are punch points. Humans have punched from up above, created fractures that go down a few kilometers. And Mother Nature has punched from down below and created fractures that come up a few kilometers. Either way, the seismic wave that's going through the plate vibrates into these spots and they're predisposed they're like wave guides they're guiding the wave over to the edge of the north american craton let's talk about the northwest anything changed since yesterday well the swarm at yellowstone carries on we were looking for this looking for a swarm big stack of earthquakes there now all the way around the park including lake yellowstone out of the park down by the tetons and further to the south guess what's down here to the south smoot Wyoming. Schmoot. I like to hear people up in Scotland say this. Schmoot. Let's go to Schmoot. Go see what's going on. What would you do if I told you they drilled out the area right around down south of Yellowstone? Let me show you. See the earthquake right here. You see the north and south Teton range that goes up here. Here's the Tetons, Grand Tetons. Here's Yellowstone National Park. It extends all the way around here right to the border. And here's Jackson Hole. Right there, where you go stay, but when you go into Yellowstone. 
Now, all of this is drilled. All of it. Do you need me to show it to you? A picture speaks a thousand words, does it not, my dear friend, whoever you are. Take a look. Wastewater disposal, too. They're putting uh, the toxic chemicals down into the ground to dispose of them. It breaks apart the shale and releases oil and gas, which they then collect. It's a form of fracking. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. You see, it just goes through the foothills, over the hills, through the woods. Well, there's no woods, but frack mother's house is where we're going. Oh, yeah, I know. I've cracked that joke far too many times, but frack mother's house, that's where we're going. All across, look at it. Look how many there are. It looks like a grid on the ground. Actually, not even a grid. It's just haphazardly done all over the place. Oil and gas. Anyway. The whole valley is done this way on both sides. All the way down. Let's keep going. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We just keep going and you see how many there are. Are you mind blown yet? Ah, what's it hurt to drill out around Yellowstone? No biggie. It's not related at all. The Royal Society of Oil Petroleum Specialists says. Uh-huh. What's cooking all that oil down there, man? It's like some kind of giant natural cracker. Do you guys know how they make how they make petroleum products? You know how Mother Nature makes petroleum products? First of all, it's not from dinosaurs. But the way we refine it is we heat it from down below, and it goes up a big stack or series of stacks called crackers, where they crack the petroleum. They heat it from down below. First thing that comes out is tar. Then up come fumes. They're rising up. Alcohols, terpenes, turpentines. Terpenes, yes. Terpenes, yes, I said the T word. A bunch of stoners just listened up now. Couldn't they make that to crack weed, man? Yes, you could, I suppose, but... Hey, isn't that how they make wax and distill it? Okay. Apply heat, and out comes the oil in. Also, the alcohols. The alcohols are the terpenes. Anyway, turpentine comes from petroleum products in the cracker. Now, guess what else can do that down on the ground? Heat from down below. Heat from down below applied to things can cause the same kind of cracking effect that petroleum does. But if you do it to rock, guess what? It cooks the rock itself. And if you apply enough heat and enough pressure, it squeezes it out just like you would squeeze out a wax or a terpene. Okay? And that is 101 for why we have a bunch of oil around a bunch of old volcanic locations. And it's not dinosaurs. It's coming up from down below. It's compressed rock. Abiotic oil. Minerals. Heated. Transmutation. Some would call it alchemy. Let's go up to the west by northwest. Oh, anyway, I got sidetracked. A bunch of earthquakes striking here as opposed to tremors. Yellowstone has earthquakes and tremors. You've got to understand the difference to understand what's going on here. Yellowstone with tremors, hundreds to thousands of them every day. The tremors. They get assigned magnitudes sometimes, but these are not tremors. These are actual earthquakes, fracturing that's going on in the surface, up above the magma chamber. Now, this happens when Yellowstone starts to rise and shift down to the east-southeast. They found that Yellowstone is slowly shifting to the east-southeast, following the direction of the arrow you like that i have to put emphasis on it because seriously the volcano itself and the whole area around it shifting due to gps measurements to the east southeast and it goes by either centimeters or millimeters depending on or inches or half inches and it does it yearly or semi-yearly other times it deflates we'll see it go down and slow down in movement. Other times it inflates and starts moving more. When it inflates, guess what happens? This. When it deflates, guess what happens? This. Swarms. It's being pumped up right now. We know it's being pumped up because we can look to the other volcanoes that were pumping just the other day. So we had Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens. They were all showing a little bit of activity. I told you doesn't mean it's going to erupt. It's a sign that there's a perturbing wave that's coming in. Well, guess where the wave's gone to now? It's gone over to the east. But it's going to be refilled. We're going to refill from up in Alaska. Now, if you're in Alaska, listen up. 
there's the potential for the area south of Anchorage to get hit. And on magnitude, I'm going to lean on the side of smaller. I hope I got this right. I'm going to lean on the side of five-ish around the Anchorage area just to the south, right in the middle of all these earthquakes. So if we go and if we kind of drew a big circle around the whole area, or is that... Well, no, that's not south of Anchorage. That's directly in the middle, just north of Anchorage. Okay. So if we look at all these earthquakes here, and we just draw a big circle around it, and we look to the middle of it, it's just north of Anchorage, next to Harp. Watch it. Up to 5.9, just like the rest of the planet right now. If it looks like it's going to be bigger, I'll let you know. But right now, it looks like it's in the mid-range 5 level all the way across. So as high as 5.9. Off the west coast of the United States, I don't think I'm getting a good earthquake picture. I don't think we're getting the reports that we would expect. I don't think we're seeing earthquakes get reported out here unless they're small. But even then, so we don't have anything to go on out off the coast. That's okay. We know what's going around the rest of the plate, so we know what to expect down in Southern California. Down in Southern California, I'm looking for 4.9 to 5.0 to strike down by Salton Sea. We have a few more days to go in the warning. All the small earthquakes, believe it or not, started to die out in the number of earthquakes. Look at this. There were huge stacks of earthquakes going up off the screen. Now there's just clusters. One cluster on the creeping section. One cluster down next to Parkfield. One lone earthquake out in front of Parkfield. And then we go over to the valley. Down south, same thing. The number of earthquakes died out. Look at it. Last day, it's a handful compared to where we've been. So this is a noticeable drop-off in the number of earthquakes down south that's usually a sign that we're building into that normal four to five point nine range when i say normal i mean it's not huge we're not talking about a seven right now i don't think knock on wood actually apparently that's an occult thing so let's just hope i'm wrong on that right like or right that it's just in the 4.9 range but the number of earthquakes dying out is letting us know something's getting ready to build and break. Clusters let us know. We, we had big lines of earthquakes. Now we have clusters. So the flow has gone down to the south. We also know that a flow is going over to the east, which is good news. And that can relieve some of the tension off the west coast if it flows over to the east. That We've seen that in the past. Fives and so forth striking on the west coast. Then we see a five strike over in the midwest and the east coast. And the activity on the west coast goes poof. And then it gets refilled again from up north. The whole process starts over again. Okay. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. No more earthquake activity out in Hawaii. That's pretty interesting. Or, or over at the National Park. Now we are solely down along the coast of Pahala. One lone earthquake out to the west, though. I wonder what's out there. I don't know. Hawaii region, it says, on the USGS side. Okay. Well, well that really helps. Yeah, I know. Hawaii region. How about that earthquake over at Delaware, man? Seriously, I'm still mind blown. Dover, Delaware, Air Force Base. Zap, zap, zap. I could tell you a story about that Dover, Delaware, Air Force Base. I'll tell it right at the end of this broadcast if I remember. Okay, over here on the west side of Hawaii's Big Island, we have multiple underwater volcanic fields that are not marked by the Smithsonian at all. Look at that. Jeez, look at some of these. Okay, yeah, these are under. Yeah, yeah. There's your undersea volcanic field unmarked. It's got big cone in the middle, a thousand smaller cones around it. Maybe not. Maybe 150, 200 smaller cones around it. Here's Loihi and the Kama, Kama Hua Kanalo, Kama Ahuea Kanalo. Loihi is what it was called up until last year. They changed the name on it. But Loihi is made up of thousands of smaller buttes. This one's spread out. This one's huge next to it. And this one looks like a moderate size one right here. So it's we're definitely in a giant underwater volcanic field to the west. Same with over here down south of Hawaii. You see how the earthquakes go down here to the south. You, they extend off the peninsula. That's this. Down here. So, earthquakes here, earthquakes here, volcanic field, volcanic field. We stopped with any seismic over here at Pu'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'u'
I'm watching for Seismic to go over here to Poo. And we're looking for a new five to strike on the big island in the next day? Two days? My warning goes maybe two days at most from now and expires. The warning for Hawaii, 5.0. Look where we are now. Look at the magnitudes now. Let's see where we are. Twos? Seriously? A three. We're going to take, we should take, a step up big time. A five as opposed to a three is 100 times more power. So we're going to go up about 100 times in power. Usually when that happens, it's accompanied by new volcanic, either a new surge at the crater, uh, at Kilauea, or like in the past, we've also seen Pu'u'o'o go. That's why I'm watching Pu'u'o'o for seismic, just in case. But that's all taking place now. Okay, the reason we're warning you for a five is the same reason we've talked about fives around the rest of the planet right now. 4.9 to 5 is going around the rest of the plate. I will remember to tell you the story about what happened at Dover, Delaware Air Force Base previously at the end of this broadcast. Central America, South America, guess what? We're dealing with the same sized earthquakes as we are on the opposite side of the planet. 5.5 and 5s. And what size in Central America? 5.5 and a 4.9. 5. Now let's show you where the earthquake struck. It struck east of Belize and Honduras. Here's the USGS map. And we actually need to open this up on the red line plate boundary map. Over here. Okay. So 5.5 striking on this red line. One more time. The red line is the plate boundary. We saw a flow come out of the Cocos plate here. Series of earthquakes along the coast. Build up. New volcanic blasts also taking place through here, and that total cumulative energy is now creeping out over to the east. So now we have to warn the people over in Dominican Republic, let's go find our halfway point between the current earthquakes. Do you see where our rings overlap here? Actually, that's Haiti. So let's warn Haiti into Dominican Republic. The magnitude could go up above 5.5. 5.5 coming across should go and break in the middle point here in the next few days. Additionally, we, nobody's going to care about this one, but out in the middle of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, same size quake should also strike. Down to the south, we've gone major quiet in South America. I mean, in the last two days, look at the earthquakes. Nothing. That's way, way low for South America, one of the most earthquake-prone zones on the planet along the coast there. Whenever I see quiet like this, I look in the middle of the open areas that are quiet for a new break. To take place and the new breaks can be fairly significant when it gets quiet for a few days in a prone zone it's like locked and loaded basically coming across we have a five up to the north it's already pointing in you see that our arrow got hit a day ago but down to the south it's gone quiet and whenever south chile goes quiet if it goes quiet for more than a few days if you don't see anything you need to keep watch for something big and with the rest of the planet going up to 7 point what? 8? It dinged in at 8.1 over in Turkey. I'm not going to issue the warning for this now. I'll do this in my next forecast because we just have too much going on. I would think by next week we'll see a transfer down here to South America. And we'll see a break here. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. It's gone quiet right now. We look for new seismic to fill in the halfway points between our current sets of earthquakes. So let's find our halfway points. Okay. So, earthquakes at North Chile. Earthquakes at the Chile-Argentina border. Look where the rings overlap here. That's where we watch. And same with up to the north. Earthquakes up in Central America going into Colombia. Earthquakes down south at the Chile-Argentina border in Bolivia. Halfway point puts us into Central Peru. Both of them are going to be hit. So, Chile right there. And Peru up here. Bull should be struck by something bigger than what's on all sides. It goes up just like the rest of the whole rest of the planet right now. We're going to go up into 5.9 to 6.0 range. I'll just put it at a 6. And if it comes in just under, don't fault me. No pun intended. Now, I said I was going to finish this up, finish up this broadcast with a story about the Dover, Delaware Air Force Base. And we already looked at that weird radar signature that I showed previously. Let me get something slightly queued up very quickly. I have to go do a search. I'm going to set down the microphone here really quick. Dover Harp Ring. 
Okay. So, Dover Harp Ring is what I'm searching. And Harp Ring is a slang term to describe a radar station, Paul C. But what I want to show you is this, something I captured several years ago. This signature here on the screen, which I don't even know if you're going to be able to see. I... Oh, of course not. Okay. Anyway, you can still see it, but this showed up on multiple radar systems. So, for instance, I've got AccuWeather. I've got College we Weather Radar here. We've got the actual Nexrad station from the Dover Air Force Base. This thing pulsed like this all at once. It showed up on radar. All my viewers contacted me and said, Dutch, what is this? What is going on? And I said, guys, the radar is pulsing all at once, but it's sending out a beam in all directions at once. It's tuned the radar up at the highest tilt, and instead of shooting a microwave like it normally does, it's pulsing high frequency. It's reflecting off itself and reflecting back to itself. It's stripping electrons from the atmosphere using the high power microwave, but it's not microwave. Like I said, it's high frequency when pulsed in a up, when they tilt the dish up and pulse, it pulses at ni up to 19 megahertz. Instead of gigahertz like a microwave in a beam, they do it all at once and it spreads out 500 miles or three, well, that's about 500 miles, 500 miles in all directions. Now, when this happens, when they pulse these, we've seen storms form and go to the center of the pulse within 72 hours. So when this happened, I issued a warning and I said, guys, looks like Dover Air Force Base is going to get a tornado within the next 72 hours. Everybody said I was trying to scare the people on the East Coast. They accused me of fear mongering. They said there was no severe weather forecast for the area. Within a day, less than 24 hours, guess what happened? A tornado formed over the Air Force Base directly. And a little tiny tornado warning was issued directly over the Air Force Base only. The next day, not even, within 12 hours. And I don't know if we have the tornado warning also on here, but I got screenshots of all of it. It was on my website. It got taken down. My website got taken down for violation of community service guidelines. Look at this. Here's my old website where I had all this documented for free for the public to see. It was on my old WordPress. And as you can see, this site has been archived or suspended for a violation of our terms of service. For more information, contact us, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? Thank God for the Internet Wayback Machine, right? The Internet Archive that everybody uses where it archives the Internet? Let's go put my site in there and see what they have archived. Well, good news. They have it archived. Let's go back and click on it and see what they've got. There we go. Some screenshots and all missing data. All the, uh, some, some relevant pictures are saved. All the ones that would matter have been removed. All the videos have been removed. All the harp ring pictures have been removed. Harp weather modification information. This might actually be, this one is, this is my harp post, but see, gone. It used to go on for eight pages. So, it's been removed from the Wayback Machine. And it's just one example. You guys can go check. Go through the whole Wayback Machine. Go look. My documentation of these things was deliberately hidden. Now, why, though? Why would you hide that? Well, somebody's doing something. They're targeting that radar over the area where I issued the warning from the Dover Air Force Base where I previously had a big run-in with the military pulsing their radar and a tornado hitting it. And I did have a run-in. The mainstream media smeared me over that. If you go look, search it up, search Dover Harp Ring, you're going to find a skeptic form denying the whole thing, saying it's birds and bugs. That's their explanation for the Harp Rings. Birds and bugs. Oh, and they, of course, they don't exist. Now, why am I taking the time to end this broadcast with that? Guys, an earthquake just struck next to the spot that's pulsing. They're pulsing over the area where I issued the warning. They have the radar pulsing this way, down over the spot where I issued the warning. Then the earthquake 
strikes out next to where they're pulsing from. How can it happen? Simply put, when you shoot enough energy through the air, it can scuff its feet across the carpet of the atmosphere, it builds free-floating ions, a charge in the atmosphere, and it turns out the layers of the atmosphere are coupled. And it flows like a wire. And it goes out to the edge or perimeter of the magnetic field of the radar station, however far out that is, and then gets absorbed by the Earth. The Earth's magnetic field, right? Well, guess where that goes? Ground. Guess what that precipitates? Very low frequency from the high frequency and microwave that they're projecting out to begin with. So let me just quickly sum this up for every uh, average Joe that's listening doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Shoot out a high, high amount of power, scuffs its feet across the carpet, builds up a charge. It then zaps out and flows out around the dome of the radar station, so to speak. Not the dome, the white ball dome, but like the greater 200-mile area, and it gets absorbed by Earth. When it gets absorbed, it turns into low-frequency electricity down in the crust. So high frequency and very high frequency of microwaves, AC, alternating current, turns into DC when it goes down into the crust. It's called efficiency scaling. It's a natural process that happens with radio waves that get absorbed by the Earth. You put a lot of energy into there, guess what happens? An earthquake. Happened here in Missouri, for instance, up here next to our radar station. Before a tornado hit, we've had it happen several times. So, earthquake strike, station pulses, Earthquake hits, tornado forms, over and over again. Not just in Missouri, it's happened all over the place. And of course, they said it's a conspiracy because we can't have anybody talking about, and uh, God forbid our enemies figured out how to use it to actually create a problem for us. So, all right, y'all, I will go ahead and save this as a video, and we will watch it back at a greater, later time. You guys be safe. We'll get it out over on YouTube in just a few. Let me remind everybody, don't be scared. You need to be prepared for earthquake activity. I know this update kind of meandered a few different spots, but had to show it to you, right? Did you guys see all that? Hopefully you saw that. Did you see it? Oh, no. You might not have seen it. I might not have had a display capture turned on. Damn. Maybe I won't save this. If I didn't show the picture at the end, I won't save this video and we'll just call this just an update that just went out the window. Because I did meander on a little bit too long, whatever. I've already got two other videos out. We'll see. Much love, guys.